After some protesters in northwest Kano and Kaduna states waved Russian flags while marching in the streets, it will be recalled that thousands in Nigeria took to the streets in Lagos, Abuja and elsewhere last week to denounce President Bola Tinubu's economic policies and government. Security officers cracked down hard on protesters using tear gas and live ammunition. Amnesty International says at least 13 protesters were killed nationwide. One of the leaders of the protest in Jost, Plateau State, Prophet Issa El Buba, says the end bad governance protest was a welcome development. He said that offers were made to him to stop the protest. We are out here today to protest. We are tired of hunger. We are calling the government of President Bola Ametinibu to listen to our cries. This will end the hardship. I came out here to join you to mobilize the nation for your sake. So we must show what we want them to do. We must be a perfect example. I would have sat down in my house and allow you to be on the street. But I went ahead of all of you to mobilize the nation to bring an end to bad governance. Till this morning, 4 a.m., there have been contentious demand for me to make a statement to the nation to withdraw from this protest. But I rejected it. Joining us now on the show as a look at the state of the nation of Nigeria amid the nationwide protests is Prophet Issa El Buwa, convener initiative for a better and brighter Nigeria and the general overseer of El Buba Outreach Ministries International. Good morning, sir, and welcome to the morning show. Thank you. It's a pleasure joining you this morning. Morning. And um, glad to see um, Dr. Rufai. And um, yourself, I've met your husband in Kenya. Oh, great. All right. And um, Dr. Ruben, doing a great job. Thank, Thank you. you. Sir. Thank you, sir. Well, Prophet, you led the protest. It was reported in uh, Joss, Plateau State. As a prophet, the expectation is that you preach messages of love, unity, even hope, which... Uh, uh, President Tinubu has joined, saying he's a hope uh, champion. But you led a protest against the state. Can you explain why you have chosen that option? And then now you are here physically with us in Lagos. It looks like you abandoned the protest. The protest was supposed to be August 1 to 10. Were you persuaded by President Tinubu's uh, uh, address to abandon the protest and leave just and come to uh, uh, Lagos? Well, Those two uh, issues. Um, let, me, let me answer that last one before I get to the first one. Having abandoned the, uh, the protest, I, I believe that you've seen that there was, um, there was a curfew that was declared on the, on the plateau. And also I have some meetings with some of the leaders here in Lagos that we need to sit down and look at the whole uh, situation and also on how we are going to keep the fire burning until we get things right. And so um, I'm here specifically to be able to strengthen the hands of men and women that are also willing to fight and to sustain the fight until we recover. You brought the plateau spirit to Lagos. Yes, because plateau stood out. Um, uh, by the grace of God, we were able to lead the protest without one soul, without losing one soul, without a breakdown of law and order. And so it stood out in all the protests in the country. And everybody was calling on the plateau uh, model and template on how they need to follow what we did on the plateau. So uh, let me come back to the first one. The first one, I'm, I'm a prophet by calling. And if you look at the calling of true prophets, true prophets are restorers of values. True prophets are people that raise the standard of what a society needs to look like. True prophets are men and women that restore certain truths to the society and to its leaders. True prophets are men and women that can look up to the eyes of anybody who is doing what is wrong and confront the person 
without bending down their eyes. True prophets are not materialistic and they are not people you can buy their conscience. They are emotionally detached or separated from people that will manipulate them for anything. They actually stand for the purpose of God on earth and they also present the needs of humanity to God. So they stand in between. And that means that they are there for the defense. For instance, the Bible says that uh, Jesus Christ came into this world um, in order to redeem humanity from captivity. And if that is what Christ came for, to redeem us from captivity, for this purpose, the Son of God was made manifest. Prophet, sorry to interrupt. Yes, sir. It's the same Bible. Yes, this sir. is a main text book. Yes, sir. Romans 13, verses 1 to 3 uh -huh. says that the people should submit to the governing authorities. Yes. Do you object to that section no, no, of the Bible? No, no. You understand the context of that scriptures. What is the meaning? Why did that scripture? The scriptures there did not say we should cover the iniquity of leaders. But the scriptures there is saying, look here. You sustain institution by invoking the power of God. Now, anything that contravenes the constitution or the institution of God's word, you are meant to go against it. That's why Paul, the same Paul who gave that admonition said in, in, in the book of Timothy, what did he say? He said, all scriptures is given for instruction, for admonition, for correction, for rebuke. And for righteousness. Oh, it's okay. okay. So what we are called for is to correct, is to exalt, is to uh, lift up the standard of system and society for the benefit of the people. That's why you're a shepherd. You're a shepherd not to see the people go the wrong way. You're a shepherd in order to guide the people on the wrong, on the right path. All right. Okay, great. Um, and thank you so much, sir, for uh, Dr. Bati is a Bible college scholar as well. Even though he did not graduate <laughs> when he went to Bible college. But I wanted to ask you something yesterday, and I'm glad that one of the leaders of the protest is with us in the studio. Senator Adams Oshomale was with us yesterday, and he said that the, lead, that the protest had no leaders, had no people, no faces, and so it's good to see your face. But he also mentioned that it was about ending this government, not about Poverty, and I want you to speak to that. Was that what you were agitating for in Joss? Were you trying to um, take out the president from office in terms of ending bad governance? And then if, if that's not the case, I'd like you to also speak to your statement where you said that the president and the National Assembly should stop living lavishly and be sensitive to the people. What would that look like? Was it reflected in the president's uh, speech? Let, let, me say, let me bring you to this. I think this is one of the things that is really, really uh, getting me hard and hot within me. I, 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 I've observed in this country that we, we love to sit on the chair of deception and lies. And I'm being very frank with you. Most of the political class, I say most, and that means 90% come to a stage where they feel they can lie on the people and deceive the people or manipulate the people. Now, let me give you this about this protest. I never knew there was even any plan by anybody. I was in worry having my conference. I was on a national tour. And I was going from state to state by road. I want to see the state of the nation. So that when we are praying, we know that we are praying specific issues. And I tell you, I tell you the truth. I've never seen Nigerians in pain like the way I've seen them this time. I've never when I confronted the former president, I confronted him because I told the nation. This time around, I went on a tour road and I, I saw the state of the nation. I was in worry. And God spoke to me to confront the government, to do things quickly and put things right. People are suffering. And there are things that just ordinary, uh, let me use the word, ordinary mind should be able to tell you I'm not well educated. But at least there are simple things that an ordinary person should know. Short-term, mid-term, and long-term goal. What do we do with the pain that we've thrown the people into? They, this president threw Nigerians into on, on common pain. People are eating grass. People are eating leaves. So would you say that it was not about ending the government, no, but writing? No, it will amaze you, yeah, because it it will amaze you to know this, that yes. not one person has given one penny 
Not one person has spoken to me. All my chapters across the country, when I called for the protest, I said, if the president do not act on alleviating the pain of Nigerians, we will get on the street. That was when, after that broadcast, uh, a group of young people from Kano, Sokoto, Kaduna, Bruno, and all of that, on the Twitter space, over 110,000, I got in there and I heard what the young men were discussing. And that was when I knew that, yes, the North is ready to bring about a change that has never been. Over hunger and, Over hunger and the level of poverty and suffering in the land and insecurity. Okay. All right. So you, you've said all of this, uh, but let me put forward some positions, and I'm sure you can react to it, like the government will have put forward. The government is now talking about the fact that foreign forces are trying to take over the nation, which is the Russian flags being peddled around. They are also talking about the fact that they have done a lot, like President Nobu said. He has given this, he has given that, he has given 570 billion to the states and all of that. I'm sure if a government spokesperson, when you say people were eating grass, if a government spokesperson over here, it will be like, oh, vegetables is a form of grass. <laughs> Probably that'll be their reaction. I'm just hazarding a guess. Uh, the government is now saying, where is my iniquity? And that's the last question I was asked. So, so where is the iniquity of President Tinubu? Can you show it to us? Number one, I want to say that there's no any international. From what all, all I know, there's no But if I arrested some Polish people, they've mm. they've we are saying, look at the Russian flags. Look at the Russian. No, I'm going to come your, on the Russian. This your, I'm going to come on protesters. the Russian. They've flag. arrested the tailor and all of that, and they are saying people are trying to take over the country. No, there is no. I just gave you the background of uh, mobilizing the nation see, there for is this process. That you know of there is none. There, are, no, other there is none that I know of. That's number one. Number two, the entire. Let me tell you, one of the days. And on the on TikTok, we were having they were have, having a meeting. There were over a million people in that space discussing the state of the nation, and they were all young people, no foreign. I tell you this: the entire protest, you see, nobody has given a dime. In one of the days, I was just but leading the protest. They freeze, freeze account of some people. They it, said foreign influence what, money came in. We don't know in. about that. It's so surprising to me to hear that uh, people were uh, donating with money and sending from abroad and all of that into Nigeria. In one of the protests, is there, a young man came up the stage and took 5,000 and said he's donating to buy water. Another lady went and brought some bags of water. People were just bringing things. Another person, 1,000. I and my family, we were buying the drinks and the water. People were standing from 7 a.m. until 2 when I would dismiss them to go back home. I mean, nobody was crying off getting food because they said they are already... How, they, many, how many people did you mobilize in Joss? Oh, they were in there, tens of thousands. Did you guys count them? Do you have a register of the people that came out? And we, we didn't have the distance, but if you take something that spanned almost half a kilometer, that tells you the crowd. That and, tells and you mobilized all of them? Yes, we mobilized and all the of them. the church mobilized all of them? The church and the people, I mean, it's both Muslims and Christians. It will amaze you. Uh, the number of the Muslims, the, the, the wall of religious divide that politicians have been using all these years has collapsed in northern Nigeria. Yeah, the plateau you see, the, while the Muslims were having prayers, I would ask the Muslim brothers, okay, it's time for your prayer. And then the Christians will surround them and they, they, the Muslims will offer their prayer. So, so who are these people carrying these flags? If you say they are not your these people. These people you see carrying these flags. Let me tell you about the North. That's my place. Okay. So one thing about the Northerners is that the Northerners, uh, let me use the word, they are driven by an ideology. When something comes into them and they see it, it's working, they will tend to pick it up and run with it. Most of these things came from this recent uh, Niger? Niger. They are seeing Niger as working because Nigerians are now going into Niger to seek for refuge. So they are seeing Niger, they are seeing Burkina Faso oh working. 
So they are now demanding, I'll tell you the truth, they are now demanding that if the military rule can provide Niger it was with... A first, according to the constitution, the military, we can't afford to have an Yeah, but allowed. that is the level of the understanding of okay, the people. Prophet, two questions. The first is, tell us about the role of Somolomon Dalong, because we were told that he was your partner in leading the protest in Plateau State. And then, Secondly, the other question I wanted to ask you, respond specifically to President Tinumbu's address. Are you satisfied with the address? Or do you believe, like some other people who were involved, civil society groups who were involved, that the president uh, was uh, delivering uh, beautiful nonsense to quote uh, Omoyele Suwara? Uh, let me, um, um, uh, Mr. Chief Solomon uh, Dalong is, is, is an amazing soul, I tell you. He's an amazing, amazing soul. I mean, he, he, he got to know about the broadcast and, um, that I made in Worry, and when he got into these spaces, he discovered that the young people were discussing about that broadcast. And so that got him um, uh, passionate about, okay, if this is it, he's going to be part of it. And I tell you, he has done a lot in shifting the minds of the northerners, majority of the northern youth, from the violent part of protest to a peaceful part of protest. He's a great soul. Number two, he came out to apologize to the Nigerian people that I was part of a government. We promise you that this is what we're going to do. But I, I feel so bad that we did not deliver. And I'm sorry. And he apologized before the entire crowd. That is what leadership is all about. And I tell you, uh, if we can have you. That's not uh, Tinobu, that's Buhari. Yes, that, that's he, he Buhari, but, Buhari. But he was part of a government. He was, he was part of APC. This was what they promised, but this is what they brought on the people. So one thing with leadership is to own up your irresponsibility or your failure. Let me come to the presidential address. I mean, that was to me, that was out of point. I was expecting, Mr. President, there is no protest that has given such a long notice like this protest. And I was expecting the president to come out, let me give you this, on four things. Quickly, number one, my government, I have heard your cry, my government immediately will work on the subsidy, the reinstatement of the subsidy for the next six months. Why we fix the CNG um, kits and what have you, the convertible centers across the nation. That's number one point. I'm giving directives that in the next seven days, you can take me on on ABC, all right? On agriculture. I am instructing the Minister of Agriculture immediately to deploy all the instruments that are required. Number one, there are crops that you can grow them in one month. There are crops you can grow them in 60 days. There are crops you can grow them in 90 days. Cassava of 90 days, rice of 90 days, corn of 90 days, apart from the vegetables. A apart from the land where we are having issues with security, there are still land where people can cultivate not GMO uh, product, but our real um, uh, agricultural um, uh, plants or products. Mm. And so, in the next in the next three months, Nigerians, you can take me up. We're going to have this number of food supply. I am instructing the the, the military and the armed forces to give a cover to farmers to protect them in the farms. That is what we were expecting. I heard that uh, fertilizers were released. Sir, I, I bought 450 plots of land in the city of Jaws in order to distribute to families to farm this year. I bought a bag of fertilizer for 40,000. I never saw one fertilizer from the federal government. And they said two, 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 200 trucks. Did you see rice? I never saw they anything. Rice. I know nothing was there. All right. Okay. So let me let me come in, and and and, and this is really important. So uh, let me let okay, me. Okay. So the last two. Yeah. Let me take you on, on the on the on the third one. The yes. third one on the electricity tariff. This thing is biting hard on manufacturers and producers. And so what he needed to do is okay on the electricity tariff. We are withdrawing this tariff for this period of time until we get our acts together. Then we're going to implement the electricity tariff. Number four. 
What the president needed to do was quickly to instruct the armed forces to act on the state of security and then say, okay, we want 100, 100 youths in every village, especially in the areas where we're having this insecurity issue. Because I want you to liaise with the 100, 100 youths to secure this territory. That's all the president needed to do. Then number five, on my cabinet, I am going to reject this cabinet. 85% of the members of the cabinet are non-functional. They are just wasting right. the resources. Right. And the president needed to cut down on the cost of governance. For me, as the president of Nigeria, I'm cutting down on the total allowance. 50% of my allowance. He's not a poor man. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. I mean, I, thank you for I mean, outline, outlining your demands and stating clearly some of the quick wins that the protest is hoping that the president would respond to. But I have two questions for you. The first one is that um, you say that this president has plunged us into poverty, but they would argue that it didn't start from now, that they inherited a bad government, and that right from the time of President Muhammadu Buhari, the, enemy, I said the, enemy, the, the economy was plunged into where we are today. And so they are just trying to mop up what they inherited. What would you say to this? Let especially, sorry, sir. Especially because you didn't protest during President Buhari's time. So why didn't you protest then when things were hard for Nigerians? And then in the first one year of the administration, you're protesting. That's when the second aspect of the question is, are you getting support from the Christian community? You are a lone voice, at least at the moment, in terms of, but some people have said that, oh, if more Christians and pastors spoke out like this, then maybe we might see the change because they have the ears in some parts of the government. They can speak to power directly. What do you have to say about those things? Two, uh, two let, let, me, let me answer the second one. Um, that's the office of the prophet. Sometimes the prophet do not go with the multitude. Sometimes you know that you're passionate about the state of the people and you go all out. Whether you have the support or you don't have the support, you don't wait for it. You declare the stand. Now, let me come back on the issue of um, the president is just one so year. So you're getting support. So you're just you're working on your own. Oh, I'm getting support. Okay. I'm, I'm getting a massive. You can see the Christian. Are we looking forward to hearing more voices rise up? I trust God for that. Okay. No, All right. this support is it in there. <laughs> No, no, no. In dollar terms. Nothing. Because nothing. we have some accounts. Nothing. I've been receiving. Not one. Not prayers. one naira. You can. They can check my account. My accounts are there. It's all run by my family. The accounts are there. Not one dime has come from are anybody. Are mobilizing no. more Christian voices to come? I'm mobilizing more Christian voices and Muslim, and Muslim voices. Because right now, I have a lot of sheikhs who have moved away from what they used to know and what they used to teach. Now they are ready to begin to teach the right thing. The affliction you see, the massive, let me use, response from the Almajiri is because of the wrong teachings some of the Islamic scholars gave. Oh, and so point. now we are approaching that. Fair point. Okay. So okay. The first, the first now question. the first question. Um, of, uh, this administration. Uh, this administration. Saying that they inherited Let me say economy. this to you: It's not Buhari's administration. The administration is, of Buhari is Buhari and Tinubu's administration. I can tell you that. Well, in the last eight years. Yes, the last because years. most some of the ministers you see. In there, we are given by Tinubu. Some of the parasatas were run by Tinubu. And remember, Tinubu was the, the leader of the party. That's why even in the second time, he came and said, this is the man. He went all out. This is the man that will fix the nation. So he's responsible for how He's well. responsible. And, and let me take you this. If you're a leader, if you're a leader and you are, you are eyeing a particular position and you want to take, even when you don't have it, you do your homework. I mean, it's open there for him to be able to know what's the state of the economy, for him to know the, the state of um, roads, for him to know the state of electricity, for him to know the state of, um, of, of security. And you plan, you sit down with think tank, men that we think through and bring out solution in number of days. Okay.